Hello there, I'm Shane Young, and I get the privilege of helping you learn Copilot Studio. But before we start, I did want to let you know that I worked with the Microsoft product team to create this awesome training for all of you Power Platform rock stars. Cool? Cool. Okay, let's get to it. Now let's send some notifications about what's going on with our agent using the Outlook email. So what we're going to do, if we look here, number five, email info out. To do that, let's jump over here to actions and then add an action. And here in the search box, we'll search for our Outlook. Now notice when I search for Outlook, that's a bunch of the Outlook.com connectors. We don't want that. So be very careful about that. It messed me up the first time. So instead, let's try send an email. And there's our send an email v2. The same action that we use all the time in Power Apps and in Cloud Flows. All right, our connection's ready. So we'll say next. And now for a name, I'm just gonna knock off the v2. But I'm just gonna leave send an email operationally. That should all work. And then for our end user authentication, we want Copilot author authentication. And then we're gonna say add our action. Now, if I was gonna have multiple email actions, maybe with different purposes, different configurations, you know, I'd probably give a more descriptive name, but the basic send an email name is spot on with what the agent wants. So I don't have to overdo it in this particular case. So now we'll go back into there. I could rename the action. I'm once again, just gonna leave it be. There's no confusion in my case. So we'll go here to inputs. And so now we wanna kind of fill in the blanks. So here we can let everything be determined by the agent or we probably want to be more descriptive. So for example, in my demo, I just want all these emails going to me. So I'm just going to go ahead and set this as a value. Say confirm. In one of my early versions of the instructions, I just always said, send it to Shane at powerapps911.com. But it's like, that's kind of silly. So we just came back over here and we just did that. And if I want to send it to two people, I just throw a semicolon in there and put the next person's email address. Just think, anything that would be valid in the two line in Outlook, that's what would go here. Maybe we'll use our PowerFX formulas to write something. Maybe we're using our variables. It's up to you. Okay, for the subject, once again, we're going to stay with dynamic subject, and we're just going to leave the subject there. If I had a particular set of guidance, we could put it in. And now for the body, what we're going to do for right now is we're going to leave this to specify the body of the mail. I will tell you that sometimes if I'm not getting the email to come out the way I want, I will come in here and get very specific about what I want, but we're gonna try by leaving just the default here for now. But remember, what we're about to add in instructions, you could come and put that here in the descriptions to really reinforce like, hey, this is what I want to happen. So I think we'll just go up here and hit save. And now that we've got it saved, we'll go back to overview. And so here we're gonna update our instructions. So we're gonna add a little bit more flair than usual. So we're gonna try something like, Send an email by using the action, send an email with the subject that says agent new incident report plus the incident number. Now, agent colon here, I've been putting that in the front of it because in this particular process, my incident reports, when it gets filled out, sends one email out. And so that one says app colon new incident report the number. And then this one says agent colon. So that is just something that I've done as part of my business process so that we can better find the pieces. So you don't have to do anything like that. I just thought that helped me. The body of the email is always well formatted HTML. Like anytime you guys use the email, always put that sentence in there. If you don't, it will send plain text. The emails will be ugly and boring and you're not gonna like it. So that one sentence transforms super awesome what you're going to get. And then the body should be an overview of the incident followed by an update on the action taken by this agent, and finally an overview of why the agent chose the severity that it did. So a couple of things going on here, right? Like if you think about the body should be an overview of the incident, that is probably what you wanted, right? But then I added this followed by an update on the action taken by this agent and an overview of why it did this. That is helping me troubleshoot and understand my agent more, right? Like we're trying to better understand why the agent's making the choices that it is, what choices it's doing. And so that information is kind of helping me validate that the process is happening the way that I want. As you get more comfortable with this, you work out all the kinks, maybe you remove those sections and it just sends out the overview, or maybe it just sends out next steps. Like be certain that you're changing this the way you want, but note that like there's a lot of little, you know, I don't want to say cheats, but little cheats here, right? Where I'm like, hey, this is just going to help me validate better. So maybe we're sending this to someone whose whole job it is just to make sure the agent's doing a good job in the beginning. And so that could be a great tool. It's just like, hey, send over what you did, why you did it. And if it doesn't turn out right, then they got something to go on to adjust. Okay. So that looks good. So then here, we'll just delete out our last one for the last time. We'll go ahead and say save. 
All right, we'll refresh our little tester over here. And then this time I'm going to paste in those direct instructions, right? Because when I am doing lots of these and I'm doing lots of fast iterations, I find that just pasting the same instruction in there over and over again, or maybe I'm trying to fine tune the instruction, like just putting it here is the same as going down there and clicking on the beaker, but now I could edit it if I wanted, or it's just faster for me. So just a little, another trick I want to share with you. All right, so we'll hit enter and there we can start to see, look, there's our three items getting processed. That's good. That's what we want to see. Next, there is our image with a photo description coming back. There it is. There is updating our photo description. So far, so good. And then next up, we should see our email being sent out. And now if I jump over to my inbox, let me see what I got. All right, agent, new incident report, incident 1020 um, to me, from me. Incident overview, there's the data. Witness information, that data. The photo description. Action taken, right? Update in Dataverse, classified as low. And then based on all this, it looks like it turned out to be a low type of incident. All right. So I would say it is doing what we needed to happen. So let's close this. And now if we go back here to overview, edit, I just put our little instruction back so I don't lose it. So here, enter. And so we don't want to update that parent record in Dataverse. So we're going to do that hopefully over the next video in just a second. So we'll just save this and I'll see you over there.